Hello and welcome. Today I am going to make a video on how to get this automata cranking motion. Uh, we're going to watch the little sticks move up and down. So right now I have these walls set to uh, transparent. That's why they kind of look a little like a little see-through. But whenever I hover over it, it turns white and it actually makes it kind of worse to see. So you could actually go to the side here and turn off the visibility. So that way we could see a little bit better. Um, the only thing with this is there's still some issues with the way this is constrained maybe. Because as you can see... This part is smooth right here, touching the cam like it's supposed to. So is this one. And I go ahead and turn this. You see this motion. Alright, and we watch the dowels go up and down. But up, oh, look at that. One of them started going through. And say, this one's still okay, but if I just keep on kind of messing with it, Well, maybe not this one. It'll go through, and then it's not doing the motion we want because the constraint somehow jumps. So if we take a look at it, uh, it jumps. I think it's under stick. No. Where is... It's on this one. Cylinder dials. This one is still constrained here. But the second one, it's been constrained to this dowel now. So hopefully you guys don't have this problem. I don't know why this happens, but I guess occasionally Inventor gets glitchy. Okay, uh, but don't worry about this. Uh, we will eventually figure out why this is happening. Oh, see, it happened there too. Okay. So I'm assuming that you guys have your own little handle that I told you to make and you measured the walls and you have the walls made. You might still have some, some of you might still have issues with the holes and all these little yellow lines that are showing up. They're basically guiding lines so that I can constraint stuff together so I could position them where I want them to be positioned. Okay, so I'm going to make this all over again and I placed all the parts here and I'm assuming you were able to make this box. I know some of you might not have these holes with the lines coming out of it, so we could go look into that real quick. I'm going to open this file. And hopefully you made this hole using this whole feature. Uh, I've caught a number of you guys actually drawing a circle, right? Clicking on this, and then you draw a circle, and then you hit extrude, and you take it out. Uh, I know that we talked about this with the additive and the subtractive method, but I specifically said don't do that for this. You want to use the whole feature because Inventor glitches out, as you saw, right? It glitches out whenever we do stuff it doesn't like. So I did something here I guess it doesn't like, and hopefully we'll figure out what it is. So uh, if you did the whole feature, then all you have to do is click these axes button. If you click this and click over this area, this little yellow line should show up. Um, and then when you click on here, you could just drag, drag that yellow line. Uh, okay, maybe you can't. Drag this to see the length that you want. So you can make it longer, it doesn't matter because you just make it invisible whenever you start assembling it if it really bothers you. I mean, it's all over this one, but I could actually go in there and make like all these lines you see, I can make them invisible. They're just work planes, so if I say visibility, see it's gone. If I want the stick to in the middle to disappear, I just right click and it disappears. But for the most part, uh, I like to see those lines. Uh, I don't mind seeing them. Maybe if, you know, you made a video or something like that and you wanted to show it off to, I don't know, somebody, you might want to uh, make them invisible. Okay. So we're looking at this. Make sure the lines are popping out of there. Uh, then if you go back to your screen, whatever you did. So like if I go here and I make it super short. And then come back over here. Look at that, it got shorter. Right? And then make it super long. 
Look at that. It gets longer. Okay. Now, uh, let's make this top part invisible for now. And let's make this side one right here to be invisible. And let's go ahead and get this stick in there. So the stick, hopefully you made the stick right too. We go in to open it. Here's my stick. And I made this work plan in here. Uh, how to do this, you just click on this one. Again, an invisible plane so that it helps you constraint. Uh, and you click on mid plane between two planes. So if I click on that one, I click on one side. Make sure you're clicking like I am, you know, like zoom in like this. So you click the right side because sometimes, you know, if it's so far away, you'll click the wrong plane. So you click one side of the plane and then you want to get a line in between this, right? That's what this is. A line in between two planes. So if I selected that, it's like this side, and then I go over to the other side. Oh, got real small. And click this side, make sure it's highlighting the correct place, which is this part right here. And if you click that, you'll get the middle work point. Um, if you want to have a line in the middle, some of it, you guys, we talked about this. If you want this line in the middle, uh, let me escape out of here. Line in the middle to show up. You turn on the visibility, but this really has to do with when you first created this object. So meaning, uh, this is the Y axis that's coming out. Um, when you create this stick, it's really easy. Let's just create one. New part. We do a 2D sketch and I pick this plane. I like that plane. And you make a rectangle with two point center, meaning you want to line it up so that the very middle, right? The very middle of the rectangle is in the middle. Usually what you guys do is this, go like this, right? And then you make the 0.25 and the 0.25, right? But I'm saying don't do this. Make it from middle, 0.25, tab 0.25. Finish this, we extrude, maybe like, I don't know, seven inches. Oops. And then I'll be able to pick my Y axis and make it show up. And then I have the little line coming out the middle. Well, so I already have this made, so I don't need this one. Okay. But make sure you make it that way so that you can get the line to come. Reason why you're going to use this line to constrain it, meaning center, center it in the very middle so it goes through the hole that you have on the side, like perfectly in the middle. Okay, let's go back here. All right, so let's constrain. Uh, it doesn't matter which one for this because it's the stick part, right? It doesn't matter if it's flush or mate. So I click here, and I click here, and boop. So it's in the middle and it's turning, but this is going on, which is fine for now. That's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and attach this guy to here. And to do that, okay, so I'm going to do it on this handle, but you can't do this method on the cams. Uh, and I'll explain why as we go. So usually you guys would select one side and maybe make sure you select it correctly because look at it's freaking out. Maybe this side. And it looks funny, but that's okay. All right. All it did was make sure that this side is connected to, is mated, right? This face is glued to the inside, right? Of this face. So if that's going on, then maybe I should mate this face with this face. So let's do that. Mate and mate. There we go. Now, I have got this going on, but at least, right, I turn it, turn it, and it follows. Okay, so, oh, wait, it's backwards. Oh, no. Okay. Let's go back here. Okay, so that means I need to mate uh, this side 
Go with this side. There we go. Okay. Now, everything looks good except for, uh, I don't want this moving. Um, so the way we just constrained it where we pick the surfaces like that, uh, it's not a good idea to do with items like this. Uh, and the reason why is because we talked about a little bit about these tolerances or like how this opening actually can't be the exact size of this because it's too tight. The fit is too tight. And since for us, we're all making one of these, well, we're probably going to have to use sandpaper to make this dowel because it's wooden dowel a little bit smaller. And you shave it down a little bit and then it'll fit a little bit smoother in here. That, that's what we do in reality. But if I was mass producing this and I made all these parts and I need some people to put it together, we're not going to have all that time to sit there and sand this down to make it fit. We want to make sure the part's exactly the size it needs to be. So you would actually make this hole. I know I told you guys to make this hole 0.25 by 0.25, but you want to make it a little bit bigger maybe. So maybe 0.26 by 0.26. So when we do that, that little extra space that you have when you constrain it like we did like this, it ends up being a little off balance. And I know it looks perfect right here because this is just a virtual world. But if it's a little bit off, that means there'll be a little bit of space right here on one side, depending on which side I constrain. So in order to avoid that little space, extra space that would show up on, you know, basically the two sides here and here, I would constrain by using the middle, the axes, or this, uh, these planes that we make. Uh, okay. So I need to stop this video and start another one because I could only make it in 15 minute increments. Um, so next video, hold on.